Hi everyone, Brendan here with Privateer Press. Metals in the Iron Kingdoms don't stay shiny and polished for long, so today I'm going to show you how to make your metals look like they've seen better days. Let's get started. So the first step I want to do is take Umbral Umber and I'm going to go ahead and dry brush this onto the black primer. I'm just going to go and dip it in, just, just slightly, and I'm going to go and just whoosh it around on my brush and get a lot of it off. I'm going to be going heavy on the dry brush on this. And over here you'll see that a dry brush is just a quick grazing on the model to try to get the raised surfaces. It's pretty dark, but that's what I want to go for. For this particular effect, we want as many textures and there's going to be a lot of different layers. You're going for dirty. You're going for messy. So the dry brush, you can see, like helps with the streaks. As I pull there, you can get streaky with it. And you can see it like grazes the top. I'm really heavy here, but I also want to make sure that some of the black is showing through, which it is in certain parts. So for the next stage, I'm going to go ahead and use Bloodstone, and I want to stipple over top of this. Now the difference between stippling and dry brushing is pretty much non-existent, except for the application. So I want to go ahead and get some paint on, and I want to swirl a lot of it off, but I'm okay with going heavy again. So instead of streaking like this, which is what we're used to for dry brushing, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pound it in and get some splotches. And I want it to be pretty heavy. I want to make sure some black is showing through. I want to make sure some of that umbral umber is showing through. We got a lot of different stages here, so it's okay to be messy. And, it, and you want to be random here. There's no real strategy other than pounding this brush onto the top of the surface of this model. So here I'm using my crusty brush, or you know, a bad brush, spare one. So I don't want to use a good brush and damage it. So the next stage is going to be my brightest color. And this is going to be the real rust. This is where the grime's going to come in. And this I'm using heart fire. Now this time I want to stipple, but I'm going to go ahead and use an alternate technique using blister foam that comes packed with many of our miniatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip this in, just like it's a brush, and I'm just going to blotch it down. But instead of a brush, this time I'm using some blister foam. I'm going to apply it the same way I did with the stippling of the brush. You can see it gives me a really splotchy, bright nature here. If this seems too yellow for you, which I, I love this color, but you can easily mix this color into bloodstone to give a nice transition. But here I want a dramatic effect, so this color is working great. I don't want to cover up all the umbral umber, I don't want to cover up all the black, and I don't want to cover up all the bloodstone, because this is just giving all that texture that makes the rust really come alive. All right, I'm happy with that. And now I need to wait for it to dry. So next, I'm going to add some pig iron, and here I'm using my crusty brush. So here I'm going to do a combination of stippling and dry brushing. I want to make sure I'm just pulling off a convincing effect. And this is the metal that hasn't been degraded or worn off or dinged away. I don't want to overwrite too many of the previous layers, but I have a lot of control over how rusty it is based on how much metal I apply back to the miniature. So here I can cover up a lot of this yellow to dull it down so it's not quite as bright if you wanted to do that. I want to make sure I have some of the bloodstone shining through and some of the heart fire and umbral umber here. Add a little bit more. This time I'm going to do a little thicker. I want some, some real reflective, powerful metal spots. And I'm choosing to use a brush over the blister foam this time because I want to be very precise with it. I mean, it's still giving me random texture, but I want to make sure it's not going places I don't want it. All right, I'm liking that. So now it's looking good and rusty. Once this is fully dry, we're going to move on to a couple washes. I'm going to start with armor wash, which is a great base for metal. But since we're rusty, I want to add a little bit of red, deep dark browns, just keep that rust alive. So I'm going to add some browning to this. Let's say there's a ratio of about 50 to 50, maybe a little bit more in favor of the armor wash. I'm going to use a bad brush. I'm going to mix it together until I find a nice tone that I like. I'm going to add a little bit of water. That's nice and dark and rich. It's going to be a good wash for me, I think. I'm using a bad brush, and I'm going to be sloppy and heavy and because I'm okay with it blotching and dripping and staining, because that's basically what I'm looking for. So just to tint this color, darken it all up, make it look worn and used and haggard. I'm going to go ahead and just mix this around. Now we're seeing some bubbles pop up. I'm going to go ahead and knock those and pop those before they dry, because we don't want that. Now the reason why those bubbles are popping up is because I'm using such a bad brush. And the way the tip is, you can see that it's, it's just creating a little bit of an air pocket as I spread it around on the miniature. So I can fix that by just dabbing them, basically stippling on top of them to pop them. But if you ever have that happen, either using this technique or doing anything else, it's probably because you're putting a very heavy layer down of a wash. It's very wet, and then your brush is losing contact with the miniature, and it's 
creating that kind of effect there, which you generally don't want. It's usually bad. So here's actually a good place we could stop. We could just add some highlights and be done. See that the heavy nature of the wash of the inks, the brown ink in particular with the armor wash there gives a reflective surface, so it actually looks very oily. I'm fine with that, but I also want a little bit more red tone to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some flesh wash. And this I'm gonna apply kind of like a glaze. So the first thing I wanna do is this is a little too brown and very fleshy. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the previous one in to darken it up, make it a little bit more red. There we go. I'm gonna use my precision brushes, my good brushes. So I wanna apply this as a glaze. Now the difference between a glaze and a wash, they're very similar, is I wanna use this, navigate it around the model, but I don't want it to pull in the recesses. I just want to tint the color where I place it. So I'm gonna add that red tone there, you can see. Now it's pretty wet, it's pretty watered down, so that's why it's gonna be hard to prevent it from dripping, but we're gonna do our best and we can apply it in multiple coats if we want. So I'm not choosing any place in particular. I'm trying to be random with it because this is a worn, weathered look. Maybe dirt got kicked up and kind of just dried on the surface or had a heavy rainstorm and kind of dried hard. I don't know. I'm just kind of being random and putting it on areas. And I can always use a second brush with a nice two brush blending to kind of just swish it around. Go somewhere I don't want it. But this part is all about control. Now this is a very light glaze, but that's what I want. I just want a slight tinge towards the red here which is what this is doing. I don't want anything too extreme. So the last stage is to add some highlights to the metal. I'm gonna do that by adding cold steel to my palette, my well palette here, and get some in. Like that. I don't need to use too much because I don't need too many highlights. Add some water, so it's nice and thinned down so I have control over it. With, and using my good set of brushes, I'm gonna go ahead and just do some spot highlights with cold steel. Now the strategy for where I put these, there's, there's really none. You're just trying to remind everyone that looks at your miniature that all this steel is still reflective, no matter how rusty it gets. So here I'm just doing the edge highlights using the side of my brush there to just streak down. Do it over here as well. Um, anywhere you think light will be caught, it's a little different with rusty metal because light ne won't necessarily reflect off the actual rusty parts. But since this is a miniature and we're not worried about getting too realistic, we're gonna go ahead and just do all the edge highlighting. Dot here or there. Go ahead and make this a little less rusty by highlighting a lot of this. I'm gonna use that second brush and two brush blending to kind of maneuver it around. So now I'm gonna kind of just edge highlight the rims of these. Again, I'm not worried too much about where natural lighting would be hitting this model if it was realistic. I'm not looking for realism. I'm just looking for a nice tabletop. You could be doing this by dry brushing as well. If you want to be real fast, you know, you just graze over the tops, which is kind of what I'm doing, but I'm doing with wet paint and the edge of my brush as opposed to trying to do it quickly with dry brush because dry brush will leave those streaks. If I can do some hot dings, you can see like here, if I want to highlight this edge of the bottom where light would hit it, do that here as well. And then if you just want to add some more streaks to it, you can easily just put like little scratches just randomly. It's a big scratch. <laughs> it's a sad scratch. The shield's crying a little bit. That's all right. So that's all you really need to do to pull off the effect. You can change up the colors, experiment and try different things out until you find something you're happy with. Um, this is definitely a fast way to get the job done. It's real effective and real easy. This trench buster shield looks like it's gone through the hell of war. Next time, we'll bring some natural elements into our painting with some wood grain. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links in the description below for more in this series and additional information on the P3 Hobby Line. <laughs> you could feel me saying it before I even finish. Okay. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> you don't laugh at my own jokes. Just breathe normally and talk to that side of the, the room. <laughs> oh, we've been doing this for too long. <laughs>